All right, section 8.2, we're going to cover the Pythagorean theorem, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. What does the converse mean? The converse of a statement. Do what? Say it. What do you mean by the opposite? Like if it's x plus something equals x minus something? Not necessarily. Think of it as an if, in an if-then statement. If it is cloudy, then it is raining. What's the converse of that? If it is raining, then it is cloudy, right? We flip our hypothesis in our conclusion. And we're going to do that with the Pythagorean theorem a little bit today, as well as explore some other theorems that uh, we use the Pythagorean theorem for. So first of all, the Pythagorean theorem. We worked on it a number of times. In fact, we just got done doing bell work over the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, homework 29 had Pythagorean theorem problems, and we're used to seeing the formula. But let me write it up on the board here real quick. And I'm going to shorten it up. Um, it's going to say, in a right triangle with legs A and B and a hypotenuse C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Now, we have said all along that the Pythagorean theorem is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That has not been technically right. What we should have been saying is the formula we use for the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared plus c squared, or equals c squared. The actual theorem says if we have a right triangle that has legs a and b and a hypotenuse c, then we can use the formula. That's the theorem, because the theorem has to have an if-then statement. The theorem can't just be a formula. It's got to be some kind of a statement. And the reason I wanted to point that out is we're going to talk about the converse of that statement. What would the converse of that statement be? And you can paraphrase it if you want. Anybody have an idea how we might flip-flop? Not everybody at once. can't hear you when everybody speaks up at the same time. Tim, what do you think? Okay, that is just flipping these two. And that's what we call the commutative property. We can take two sides with an equal sign. Flip them. All right, that's not flipping the whole statement. Where is my then? What comes after the then? Let's put it that way. Right, the formula. So the converse is going to be if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then what happens? Now think of it. Okay, then a triangle has legs a and b and a hypotenuse c. More importantly, what kind of triangle is it? A right triangle. So the converse says, if this is true, then we have a right triangle. Now, my geometry teacher in high school would probably cringe that I took out some words because it really should be then all of this stuff. And even some of this stuff up here I paraphrased even more. But basically the converse is just flipping the formula with the fact that we have a right triangle. So the converse again says if this is true, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then we got a right triangle. And that's what we're going to use uh, quite a bit today. We're going to check and see whether something's a right triangle. Now let's go back to where we learned about triangles though. Uh, let's say I give you three sides of a triangle. Let's go 10, 11, and 21. Question one, do those sides make a triangle? What should we check for? Remember the check we did? This was, this was a, probably months ago. But I want to refresh our memory so that way we can head into right triangles. Seth said yes, Mary said no. no. Got another no. Any more yeses? No. Got another no. Okay, the no's are starting to um, get the majority here. Why no, Mary? Because when you add 10 plus 11, it's 21, and it has to be greater than 21. Right. Go back a couple months. If we got three sides of a triangle, we said that if we took the two smaller ones and added them together, it had to be greater than this third side. Remember doing those? 
Now, I put this one up here on purpose because 10 plus 11 equal 21. Does that make a triangle? No. The two smaller sides added together have to be greater than the third side. Um, let's do this one. Does that make a triangle? 3, 4, 5. Yes. yes. The two smaller sides, 3 plus 4, is 7. 7 is bigger than 5. It makes a triangle. Now we're going to take it a step further. Do those three measurements make a right triangle? Well, let's check it. How do we know which one's C in this problem? The biggest, biggest one. one. The biggest one, right. That's what we're checking. The longest side would have to be the hypotenuse. So we're going to check, put a question mark here, is 3 squared plus 4 squared equal to 5 squared? And we can do the math. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and yes, 9 plus 16 equals 25. So you may get a problem that says, um, let's make something up here. Let's go 5, 8, 10, and the question might be, is that a right triangle? Hannah, you're saying no pretty quick. Why no? Yes. So, is this a right triangle? No. Is it even a triangle to begin with? Yeah. It's a triangle to begin with. Take the two small sides. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 is bigger than 10. Okay. It's a triangle. Then we have to check the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this problem, a squared would be 25, b squared would be 64, c squared would be 100, and we can see that 25 plus 64 does not equal 100. It's not a right triangle. It's triangle, but it's not a right triangle. We're going to go one step further though. What kind of triangle is it? We're going to figure out whether the triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. Okay, we know, Hannah said that's a triangle. 5, 8, 10 makes a triangle, but it's not right. Is it acute or is it obtuse? And we can use the Pythagorean theorem or um, something along the lines of the Pythagorean theorem to check that. What we're going to do is we're going to check a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here's what we're looking for. If the c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be acute. If the c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be an obtuse triangle. And if the c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be a right triangle. So you're going to have several applications today where you're going to look at some measurements, and they're going to say, what kind of triangle is it? Is it right? Is it acute? Is it obtuse? And we can use our a squared plus b squared to help us with that. So again, to paraphrase, if the c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, it's acute. If the c squared is bigger, it's obtuse. If the c squared is equal, then it's right. So let's go back to this problem that I originally put up there, 5, 8, 10. We know it's not right because 24 plus 64 does not equal 100. But what we want to look at is, is 5 squared plus 8 squared, how does it compare to 10 squared? Is it less than, is it equal, or is it greater than? That's the question we're going to answer. Well, we've already done the math behind it. This is 25 plus 64, and that's 100. 25 plus 64 would be 89. So how does C squared compare to A squared plus B squared? Is the C squared bigger, smaller, or equal? Bigger. It's bigger. So if the c squared is greater than the a squared plus b squared, then this triangle, the 5, 8, 10, it's not right, it's not acute. It's obtuse. Let's try another one. Let's do another example. Let's do that triangle. 7, 8, 19. 
What kind of triangle? Good. Chandler, why not? Okay. This one's not acute. It's not obtuse. It's not right. Because 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 is not greater than 19. So, trick question. This one's not even a triangle. 7, 8, 19 wouldn't work. So, if you run into a problem today where it asks you what kind of triangle it is, first thing, check to see that it is a triangle. And if it is, then we're going to go and we're going to compare our c squared value. Let's try a different one. Um, let's try that one. 8, 15, and 17. First of all, is it a triangle? Yes. 8 plus 15 is 23. 23 is greater than the longest side, which is 17. So it's a triangle. Now let's check. Let's make this our A value, this one B, and we always have to make the longest one C, remember? So A squared is 64. B squared, C, 15 squared. 225. And we want to know less than, equal, or greater than. And 17 squared, who's going to tell me that? How much? 289. 289. <sighs> So let's compare them. 64 plus 225 is 289. How does that compare to 289? Well, they're equal. What kind of triangle do we have? Right. A right triangle. And again, 8, 15, 17. How was I able to just put those numbers on the board and make it work, make it come out as a right triangle? Well, that's kind of the bell work that we did today. The second one that came out to be a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Whenever we have these non-zero whole numbers for sides of a, of a triangle and it fits a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we call that, and I'm going to back up, call that a Pythagorean triple. And this is kind of a shortcut. So if you're a note taker, get these down. Pythagorean triples. They can really shorten our work up. Again, how did I know that 8, 15, 17 was going to end up a right triangle? Because 8, 15, 17 is what we call a triple. And here are some of the common triples that we see. We see 3, 4, 5 triples. I've already done that one on the board today. A 3, 4, 5 triple. We have... Um, let's see, we just got 8, 15, 17. That's a triple. We have the triple that came from our bell work. And that one was 5, 12, 13. And I'm leaving some space in here because I'm going to fill some things in. And then the final one that we see sometimes is 7, 24, 25. And you think, well, that's not very common. I don't know if you've ever seen a 7, 24, 25 triangle. Well, get ready. You're going to start seeing them because it's a common triple. Now, the reason I left some space in these is not only is a 3, 4, 5 triangle a Pythagorean triple, but any multiple of this. Any triangle that has a ratio of sides of 3 to 4 to 5 is a right triangle, such as if I multiply those by 2, a 6, 8, 10 triangle. That's another triple. But we don't, we don't say that it's its own triple, like these in red are, because 6, 8, 10 can reduce down to 3, 4, 5. If we multiply this red one by 3, 9, 12, 15. That's another triple. So we can check all of these. A squared plus B squared, does it equal C squared? Yes. Okay, Pythagorean triples are these non-zero whole numbers for the sides of a right triangle. Or in other words, what we could say is this, that 3, 4, 5 times any number x. 
So any triangle that were reduced down to 3, 4, 5 for its sides would be a right triangle. And we could do the same thing with all of these. Let's look at the 5, 12, 13. If we take everything times 2, then a 10, 24, 26 triangle would be a right triangle. If we took the numbers in red times 3, a 15, 36, 39 triangle would also be a right triangle. Or again, anything with the ratio of 5 to 12 to 13. And we could do the others, but we're not going to for time's sake. You know, we do multiples of this one, 16, 30, 34. It's going to be a right triangle because it reduces to 8, 15, 17. So Pythagorean triples, they're kind of shortcuts for us. So if we're looking at a problem like number 2 now, and we don't necessarily want to go to the Pythagorean theorem, we can look and see 12, 13, and then go, aha, I remember there's a Pythagorean triple for this. And it's the 5, 12, 13 triangle. So as you get these memorized, some of you will. Some of you are going to have them memorized, and you're going to be using these triples a lot. Others of you will either choose not to, or it just won't click. Either way, you can still use the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can still use that fact to determine whether something's the right triangle or not. But the triples are there just there to help you. They're shortcuts. Um, they're this pattern that we can recognize. All right.